So unfortunately, a lot of the code that you write is going to be incredibly slow no matter what you do. You could throw hardware at it. You could do all types of performance tricks. But database calls and network calls are slow by nature. They are literal turtles in the world of computing. And the reason that this occurs is because you have to reach into an outside system. When you make a database call in your code, that database does not exist in your code. You have to go outside. And the same goes for a network request. When you make a network request, you have to go thousands and thousands of miles to a server, to a router somewhere in order to actually be able to get that request and get it back. And in the grand scheme of computing, these are some of the slowest actions that can exist. But we have a secret weapon and that is async. And the concept of async as we know it today was actually invented by C Sharp. But it was quickly stolen by all of the other languages, which I totally understand because it actually was a really great idea. So let's just talk about it from a 10,000 foot overview synchronous. This is slow code. What's going to happen is that the code will now be fast because it can go outside of the actual scope. What asynchronous code really does is it allows us to execute multiple pieces of code at one time. While slow code is being executed in our stock controller, we can actually execute code in our comment controller and our stock controller at the same time. And asynchronous code is literally the backbone of why servers are so fast today. But the beauty of C Sharp and the beauty of .NET is that you can quickly add async to almost any piece of code. Watch this. So if you want to make a function async, the first thing that you do is you just add async to it. Now, async isn't actually doing anything. This word async is literally just for you, the developer. When you add async to a function, there is nothing else going on. Another thing that we need to do is we need to add this thing called a task. A task is just a return type, and this is going to give us the return type in the form of a task, which is basically a fancy wrapper for our object. You see, when we actually get done with an async action, we have to return something. Even if the function has not returned, even if the database call has not returned, we need to actually return something, and that thing being returned is a task, whether something is there or not. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually add a weight. Now, a weight is just a fancy word for make this async. And if we add a weight to our get stock from the database, remember that we don't want to actually make code that is not going outside the system async. What's going to happen is that this is going to perform async code just right here, and it's not going to perform async code anywhere else. And when we actually run this function, this code right here is not going to be async. This code right here is not going to be async. This code right here is not going to be async. The only code that's going to be running async is what you put await. And when you add a weight to a piece of code, .NET is going to add what's called a coroutine. And a coroutine basically means that you are going to get your code returned to you in the form of a yield. And this will allow the code to interrupt any other process that's going on, quickly return, or then you can quickly go on to your next piece of code and execute the rest of the code. But that's a lot. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code, and let's start switching over a lot of the code that we wrote to async. So now we are inside of our controller and we need to go ahead and start turning this boring synchronous code into fast, cool async code. And as always, what we do is we go ahead, we slap on the async keyword. Remember, async doesn't actually do anything underneath the hood. It's there for you to be able to identify asynchronous functions because once you actually make code async, it's going to be a lot harder to debug and you need to be able to spot when the await keyword is present. But we will make an await keyword just in a second after we add the return task. The return task is the return type that is going to be returned at the end of the function. And in our case, our I action result is what's going to be returned, but we need to wrap it in a task because technically when this returns, something has to be there. It may not have actually returned. This await may not have actually succeeded and got something from our database. But at the end of the day, 
the compiler still needs a value there to be able to hold while it runs other stuff. And once this task gets completed, it's going to use a yield to quickly get the value back where your code will resume. But let's go ahead. We also need to finish here. We need to make sure that our actual asynchronous code, this is actually asynchronous code. Nothing else in this function is actually asynchronous. This is the only piece of asynchronous code because it has no weight. So what we need to do is we need to take this previous to list, this boring to list, and we need to make it async. Now we could make this select async right here, but I think it's easier just to kind of break this apart, go down here. And what I'm going to do is just make a var uh, stock DTO. I'm going to turn this into a stock DTO and we are going to wait till this returns and then we are going to do the select. So after this gets done running, then we will for sure have our stock DTO down here where we can then manipulate it and return. That was a lot. The next functions are going to be a little bit easier. So let's go down here, same exact thing. We're gonna go async, go ahead, wrap this in a task, go down here, and we need to identify. Because we're going to actually go to the database, we need to make this an await, and we need to make this a find async. So we're gonna go find async, looking good, not really much else to do here. That was a pretty much a gimme. So next, async, go ahead, wrap this in a task, then go here, go task, and anything, remember, anything that's going to the database, we want that await. So we're going to go await right here, go await right here. And you're going to also get red squiggly lines because we need to make this async. And luckily for us, Entity Framework has all the asynchronous code built directly in, and we don't have to actually worry about any of it. So go down here, go async, go task, go action result. We need to look for anything that's going to the database. So we got database code right here. We're gonna go first or default async. It's gonna go ahead, bring that in. And need to make this in a wait because we're hitting the database. And we also need to make this async. Lastly, delete's going to be a gimme. Also need to, okay, I for, almost thought I forgot to put the async right here. Okay, so the del delete's going to be pretty much a gimme. It's going to be very easy. We just have to wrap it in a task. So go here, we're gonna go here, first or default async. This is actually super easy, except for the delete. The delete gets a little crazy. Do not add an await to the delete because remove is not an asynchronous function. I don't know why that is. If you do know why, please leave a comment down in the description and please enlighten us because I searched everywhere and could not find the reason. So that looks pretty much good to go. Um, I'm gonna go down here. Go ahead, start running this thing. So .NET watch run. Go ahead, run it. So let's go ahead and test everything. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do a git. And see here, everything looks good. Getting the same values back that we got before. Gonna go ahead, add another post like this. Let's go back up, test it real quick. And it looks a lot faster as you can tell. So our string did show up. Let's go ahead down here. I'm going to grab this and going to See here, we'll go ahead, do our git by ID. Go ahead, pass that in here. Looking good. Let's do a put, try it out. Go ahead, pass that in there. And I'll change the divid, the purchase to 90. Looking good. And then let's go into here and let's go ahead and delete it. And with that, we'll make sure that everything is working correctly. And we have a 204. Everything is looking good. So after this, we're going to go ahead and move on to repository. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.